It's the takeover. It's the takeover right here on the award-winning CBJ Radio. We're always bringing you the coolest artists on Wednesday nights, and tonight's no different. California singer-songwriter John Trescott Lewis. He spent 40 years working for ABC. He retired. He built a home studio, and in 2019, he started recording his own music, and he hasn't stopped. His last couple singles were more country, but his brand-new single, The Big Show, it's a rocker. We're excited to have John Trescott Lewis back on the show. First, John, thanks so much for coming on. Hey, Jeff. How you doing? Awesome. Man, we're, we're going to talk about the song here in a few minutes. But first, congrats. The hard work is paying off. Your last release, Can't Stay Here, hit 100,000 streams on Spotify. Finally. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a couple of years, and that was, that was a pretty big, exciting milestone. I have to thank all my fans and my insiders group and all for making that happen. Yeah. So you probably made like $3. I made maybe $3 and 20 cents. I'll have, you know, <laughs> <laughs> well, can't stay here. The one that hit a hundred thousand streams, it was kind of a country rocker. The next couple of songs are rock songs. I think maybe because you were in TV for 40 years and you saw 18 million shows, you just can't pick a music genre. What is it, John? Yeah, that's, that's for sure. So, you know, grew up with rock because the really country in uh, California wasn't happening until fairly recently uh, in a big way. So we weren't exposed to it. So all we really heard was whatever rock and roll was being played on the, on the local FM stations during the 70s through the 80s and 90s and 2000s. And so that's all we had. And so we, uh, us folks out here, didn't really have any idea that there was country out there. Once I heard it, I went, oh, my gosh, this, the storytelling got so good. You know, rock kind of slowed down overall, and uh, country took off and uh, just heard great songs and was thinking, wow, I want to write great songs like that. So that's kind of what I, I ended up going toward for a while uh, because I just write songs, and sometimes they come out in a particular genre, perhaps whatever you're listening to at the time. Hard to know, but... Yeah, well, so that, I think that's when we you're younger, we're more towards the rock vein. You were a Van Halen fan, but I mean, you're still going to rock yeah. shows. I think when we get older, the storytelling comes in, and yeah, it's it's a little more of a a country vibe. But and going over, um, you know, after a, a few decades of living, you end up kind of reflecting on some of the. So there's always good old days and good old times, and back when you were seeing concerts for you know five dollars and things like that, and so. When you look to see what things are now and some of your heroes are coming back around, you get to see them again. And then some are some aren't and some are like going away and you have to like grab it when you can. And when you do and it's great, it's so exciting. And you remember, oh, this is why I loved rock. This is why going to a concert in an arena is so amazing when it's one of those magical shows. That's why everybody buys the T-shirt. Exactly. When it's the big show. Same. You had an interesting start, though, to your solo career. When you first started writing music, you were working with other artists. You worked with Sean Jones, Lee, Amanda, Dick Wells. You were collaborating because you didn't know if you wanted to sing the songs. It was finally <laughs> stuck that got you there. But what changed? Yeah, at some point, you either kind of have to put up or shut up, you know, as they say. I had written a couple of the country tunes, some of the earlier ones, one specifically stuck. And one called um, Misunderstandings. I thought, well, how, how am I going to show somebody else how to show to sing this song with attitude, the right attitude? So as, as you know, I, uh, now I have a great band in Nashville, and I go there, and I'm working with the, the greatest engineer producer there. And he pretty much is my mixer, my engineer, and I, I kind of take care of the rest of the stuff. He's working, without me spilling the beans too much, he's working with the biggest name in the business right now continually. So that should kind of tell you, who his mainstay is. Wow. And just because we're friends, I got to work with him. And, and I'm always talking to him about what, you know, what I should do with this. And he said, you just need to sing it and get out there. So we spent, we recorded the song on the, um, Tuesday and Wednesday. He said, well, we'll just sing the song. So I went in there to do it. We spent 13 hours singing five songs. And it was so nice of him to stay up that late. And at the end of all that, he said, okay, now you're getting really good. We're going to go back and sing the first two songs again. <laughs> so that was my education into singing in Nashville and how to really do it, how to belt it out. And just, you get your confidence, you know, when people are encouraging. And so it just, it really happened for me. I think you can hear it on stuck, even though it's maybe not the greatest vocal in the world. 
it does fit the song and that's really all that matters. Well, and your collaboration with Lee, what is it, Lee Crabby? It's Lee Crabby, right. I think this was your last one, right, with Already Gone? Uh, Already Gone. So that's our most recent. He also sang backup on The Big Show and several other of my tunes. We're okay. very close friends. He's a worship leader. We we often play together in church and, and sing together. And we also are very good friends where we go over each other's houses and we listen to the songs. And I produced a lot of records that he was on back in the 90s. Uh, before I was writing myself. And so uh, we're very close. He just happens to be a phenomenal singer. He sang the first first one was called Time Slips Away that was written for my daughter's wedding, which happens to be, if you have young children, anyone out there, one of the best songs in the world to get a screaming baby to be quiet, <laughs> to settle down. You play that, they immediately stop crying. I don't know why, but try it, I guarantee it. So anyway, Lee sang in a couple of those songs for me because, you know, I was very insecure about doing a ballad that took serious, you know, quality breath control and that kind of thing. He's really the guy for that. But, you know, now I'm I'm doing my own thing. Yeah. Uh, go check John out. He's at musicbyjtl.com. He's on Facebook. Go to YouTube. Check out all of his stuff. His latest single, The Big Show, is out now did oh, yeah. you move john where, where where are you living now are you still in the valley this lakefront yeah. property looks pretty nice we're still in uh simi valley california which is part of ventura it's right next to the san fernando valley in uh los angeles area so that's hot and warm and and everything yeah. and yeah when it rains i think i may have mentioned this last time every time it rains which of course this year it's doing but it hasn't done for the last i don't know how many years I live across the street from kind of a, a an open park area, and whenever it rains a lot, that turns into a lake, <laughs> and the water doesn't go anywhere because it's all it's all clay here, and so I get lakefront property. Okay, and that's so pretty. That's awesome. what it was. That okay. I thought you actually had lakefront property, but it's it's the no. rain. <laughs> but I have pictures <laughs> of me made it, you know make it look like I do. So. Ah. Oh, that's hilarious. I mean, the rain wreaked havoc on you this winter. It did, boy. Good memory. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, the kind of thing where it it comes through the roof, no matter what you do. <laughs> You're sitting here, and you find you find in the living room. You better put a lot of tarps up, and the studio got flooded, and had to rebuild all that. You know, this is the stuff that happens. Yeah. You know, to get some rain, it might be worth it. You know, we need it so badly. Well, yeah, exactly. It, it's good and bad. Well, you played a winery in March. Have you been playing more live shows? Yeah, I'm trying to do um, places that'll you know have me. And uh, wherever we can, we're going to Texas in a couple of weeks and we're hoping to, the, the current plan is to play a few places there. Uh, it happens to be during the eclipse of all crazy things. So while we're there, which happens to be going right through Dallas area, we're going to go outside and look at that. Not directly, but <laughs> indirectly. Yeah. And find some places to play while we're out there. But yeah, it's really trying to do a lot more live to just get that stuff out there bring more of a local following instead of just the internet and spotify worldwide kind of stuff yeah have you seen an eclipse before yes i have actually a couple times uh, in my memory is a couple times but my wife reminds me that very likely it was not necessarily a <laughs> it could have been a lunar eclipse could have been a partial solar who knows but i just remember it happening yeah how it's... about you it's amazing. I saw the one back in like 2017 came through Wyoming and it was very impressive because we were like in the heart of it. But this one, this net, this one that's coming up here in a couple of weeks is like four minutes long, I guess, or it's, it's huge. Yeah. Yeah. Full on thing with, uh, you got to wear the special glasses and the internet says, don't be careful. Don't buy the cheap glasses. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, get some good ones and it depends on where you are. They might even give you some. So that would be yeah, cool. Yeah. But For yeah. Sure. We we were thinking about it, but it's it's such chaos and when I mean even in Wyoming there was like 500,000 people that showed up. So I can only imagine how many crazies are going to be in Texas. No kidding. No, that I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, maybe it's not the best time. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean the the shelves were cleaned out. Like everyone was getting gas. I was like, why are you freaking out? This is like two minute long eclipse and they're doing the same thing. <laughs> right. It's like, nothing's going to happen. Don't worry. It's kind of, it's kind of freaky for a minute, but then everything is fine. Yeah. I hear the, uh, the birds stop making any noise and the crickets start coming out in the middle of the day. Yeah, it was, we were on a, we were on the Casper mountain. So we were up in the mountains at this like Girl Scout camp. 
and there was horses next to us. And yeah, they were like freaking out because it, it starts, you know, it's like dusk or something. It starts getting dark and it's yeah. weird. All the animals are like, what's going on? It's not supposed to be nighttime. Uh, but only last couple of minutes. It's uh, pretty crazy. But sorry, go, I took you took you way off the music here. That's all right. Uh, go check him out. It's musicbyjtl.com. He's on Facebook. His latest single, The Big Show, is out now. Well, you went and saw Steely Dan and the Eagles in January. How was that? It was the. I think it was the perfect show. And, yeah, that's um, a great combo. Yeah, it was pretty spectacular. I mean, Steely Dan opening for the Eagles. I mean, it, it seemed weird. It's like seeing the Eagles opening for Steely Dan. To me, Steely Dan is my favorite band, but that concert was probably the best one I've ever seen. It was almost too perfect. You yeah. know, it makes you wonder, <laughs> can they really do that that well live? But <laughs> they seem to. And I dug it. And if you actually go and watch my video of the big show on uh, on YouTube, uh, I won't tell you where we got it, but a lot of the uh, footage on that is live uh, for things that I took. Well, that's uh, what that I, was I actually wondering. shot. If the crowd was from that show or what? Not the sound, but um, well, yeah, a little bit of sound too. Yeah, you might say that, but but not necessarily for that show because, of course, I could never use something for that show. No. Wink, wink. Yeah, but there's some pretty cool stuff on there. Yeah. Well, tell me about your kids, John, because when I was watching some of your shorts on YouTube, I can hear your son. You know, he's like, dad, dad. So you at least got one son. <laughs> yeah. I have, a, I have a son and a daughter and, uh, my son is uh, kind of a, a little bit of a YouTube sensation himself in the area of gaming. He is quite the gamer under the term mist blue B L U U. And he is pretty popular on that while being a, a registered nurse in emergency room trauma nurse. Yeah, he's kind of multi talented. We have that. I'm in my daughter, and then we, of course we've got grandchildren coming with a third one coming in August. So that's about the most fun you can ever have when when the grandchildren that are two, one and two years old are hearing your song on the radio or or, or on a playback, and they start dancing. They start saying, you know, it's grandpa, it's grandpa, <laughs> all crazy things. Yeah, that's a trip. Wow. I did not predict that would happen. Yeah. Well, I mean, what do your kids got to think with you doing this now? I think that they seem to be having a pretty good time with it. So they they use it, you know, they they have a lot of fun with it. Share it with their friends and and all. So we've done a lot of crazy things. Did a little sh uh, short video, um, short film, did the soundtrack for that. So I've done a lot of things in a fairly short amount of time. Thank goodness that that all worked out so well. So it's uh, I'm well involved with their lives because that's some of the projects that they're doing as well. well the big show is uh, the next thing in the line of of music that that now kind of changes my vibe a little bit. And the persona that I currently have on on Spotify and YouTube and out there as being more of a a country person, certainly the country ballads and and country type rock. And now this goes back to my roots a little with. This is pretty, you know, this is, this is arena rock, practically. Well, let's talk about the big show. Yeah. First, who's doing your lyric videos? Are you doing these? I, yeah, I did that myself. Uh, it's just tough to find people that will do it the way you want. Yeah. For us people that are perfectionists. Yeah. So I just did it myself. But, I mean, the lyric video, you did a great job because even the guitar, everything, I mean, it fits perfect. It's almost like you're, you're, that's you at the concert. <laughs> that was absolutely by design. Uh, I lucked out that fortunately I know how to do this, but to find videos of, that you did or of other people that fit in to a song's tempo and beat and, and make it exciting and you still don't show the other members of the band is pretty hard to find. So this was really deliberate on, on how to create a vibe of a, a really exciting live show, arena rock type concert with unforgettable melodies and uh, performances for a cheering crowd kind of thing. And yet not show the band. Exactly. And make so you work. don't see me there because I want the, I wanted the uh, ability for people to just have it in their mind. And who is this? You know, what is the big show? Is it, it could be anything from a, a home Depot opening to, you know, a, uh, a mega church to a rock concert to a, you know, a restaurant that has a line down the block. 
It could be whatever that people seem to get really excited about and want to show up there in mass and then go in and there's this big thing that happens. And my whole goal was, is the song deliver a big impact? Like when you put a title like The Big Show, it better be big. Yeah. So it's, it's a little bit of a throwback to every great rock band that I've ever known and heard. You crushed it. I listened to the song and I don't know, I mean, I'm religious, so I hear the water and wine, so I, I kind of get like a religious vibe. But then when you listen to the lyrics... You said it when you said this could be for a Home Depot opening, it could be for a big church opening, it could be for a band opening. <laughs> I mean, it fits all of it. it. I don't know. what. I mean, what was your thoughts when you first started? Was that it? Uh, it was all of those things. But remember, there was no video. There was no electric guitars. It was just me and an acoustic guitar, which is an interesting way to write something that's going to be what I, I knew from the beginning. I wanted it huge. Yeah. And have that almost the who kind of that that downbeat of the chorus of here we are at the big show and it's a big guitar you can see the guy you know throwing his arm up in the air and as well as uh, what I did in the video it really does capture that but yeah it was uh, honestly it was very similar to what you're saying um, we were going to a place in Washington we were going through this forested area and all the way through the trees and all of a sudden I, th I think I see this thing that's coming. And you can hear the crowd cheering and uh, we get there and it, it is the big show very much like you're suggesting. And it, it was giant and there was a big line and there was all the greeters and then the lights turned down low and then the people, then the lights came up and then everything was starting to happen. And then the great one would say his part and the big show was now born and then it would take you away, but you won't go very far. If you can come as you are, and that explains or doesn't explain everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I think you're very close to what the original concept of it was. Well, and I and even if you thought, used to, you know, the come to see all the wonders turning water into wine. I thought, you know, bands, when you become such a huge music fan like we are, it's almost, it's a, it is a religion. Absolutely. Especially arena rock where... I mean, it's the first time you saw Queen doing We Will, We Will Rock You. Yeah. Whether you like the song or not, the arena was doing it. And you can't help but be moved by that, dramatically so. You know, yeah. goosebumps on the arms, the hair standing a little on end, <laughs> and looking at other people, and they're all, everybody's in the same vibe at the same moment. There's nothing like that. And that's kind of what this felt like to me. As a matter of fact, some places... Uh, even churches now, there are churches that are basically rock concerts with a message. Oh, yeah. I like both. I don't mind. I, you know, I didn't I didn't grow up in the church, so this is something fairly new to me, and I just thought it was amazing. Go and watch the lyric video for The Big Show. Go to musicbyjtl.com or go to YouTube. Type in John or John Trescott Lewis. It's L-U-I-S, The Big Show, and yeah. it'll come up and go check it out. So what's coming next, John? I mean, I, I heard maybe some rock ballads. What's happening? Oh, good question. Yeah. So last time I went to Nashville, I recorded 12 songs in two days. I lucked out because like I said, I got a great band. I'm really lucky. It was probably harder on me than it was on them. <laughs> because you can imagine you have to sing it about three times with them. And then you go back later and you sing it about six or seven more times each. So times 12, it was quite a week. We did a few of the songs that you're hearing now. Certainly we did the big show. And then we have about six or seven more songs that are ready to go. And they are in the rock vein for right now. So I, I did country. Now I'm switching to the big show. It's, it's clearly rock. The next one, next one is very much like a Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon rock song. I mean, it's really in that for lack of a better explanation, and then a, a very sad English type ballad, and then another big rocker, a very Springsteen ish. Didn't mean to, you know, you got 50 years of music behind you. You just hold that all in and love all that stuff. And then when you finally start writing, it comes screaming out. Wow. And you just got to go where it takes you. Go and check him out. Go and follow him. Keep your eyes on him because a lot more coming in. I like it. I was kind of full circle because your first song was a prog rock song. Now, yeah. now we're now we're getting into 
Pink Floyd territory. Watch out. <laughs> I mean, yeah, one of my favorites. They can't see you, John, but I'm looking at you on Zoom. You're in your home studio. Do you like going to Nashville and doing it there with them? I mean, you could do your vocals and stuff right there. I and in fact, I do. Um, I, I do, but there's something about having the greatest engineer in the world, or one of them certainly, on the other side of the window, coaching you on what he heard you do. Yeah. And knowing that before and after you, so the greatest acts in the world are in that room. And it's, it's a, that helps you kind of get a lift and it's, it brings energy to things that it's a little harder to do in your home studio, unless you can imagine it all, yeah. but I still do. Um, I just finished a song a couple of days ago that is in a completely different vein, completely different. Uh, we were talking about Steely Dan a little while ago and they are, you know, other Jimi Hendrix, they're my favorite band. <laughs> I just wrote a completely Steely Dan tinged tune, which is about as far from what I've got on here right now. And you're going to hear it and you would go, oh my gosh, that does sound like them. I hope it does anyway for other people. <laughs> In my mind, it does. So yeah, it's just you take the song where it goes. And sometimes that does not include you singing it. And maybe it doesn't have you playing the guitar. What's best for the song, you know? That's that's the the secret, and that's the wonderful experience of it all. Yeah. Will we see more collaborations down the road? Yeah, for sure. Um, I tend to write with other people uh, fairly often, but I just thought I'd do these things for myself just for a little while, so I could find out who I am and you know break that out a little bit more. Yeah, I think you confused us even more, John. Sorry. <laughs> I had a PR firm a couple of years ago just to, just to try that out. And they said, okay, here's what you are. Yes. Yeah, well, who do you think I am? This Here's what you are. You are a rock romantic, old school rock, old school rock romantic. Yeah. And I went, oh, wow. Yeah. Because if you look at rock from the what 70s or maybe 80s or 90s, it's completely changed. Oh, it yeah. starts out as one thing. And then all of a sudden it has journey do and queen doing high pitched operatic kind of songs. And that's the same stuff we did in the seventies and eighties. I, well, I just think it is what it is. I'm just going to do it. And hopefully people get a kick out of it. And they are, and he's got a hundred thousand streams. He's going to hit a million on <laughs> the big show. Go and check him out. Music by JTL. Go to YouTube, watch the lyric video for the big show and much more to come from John Trescott Lewis. John, it's always a pleasure talking to you, buddy. Take care, Jeff. It's great talking to you. Here's the big show to take over. CBJRadio.com.